when I was 20 meter underwater, the O-ring on my air tank blew out and my air emptied in under a minute. I live to see another day, but these accidents can be fatal for those who are not prepared. So in this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know to prevent these accidents, quickly familiarize yourself with your gear, and assemble your scuba gear for safe and stress-free diving. Let's dive into your foundation of your scuba setup, the tank and BCD. This is where it all begins, and getting it right sets the stage for a safe and comfortable dive. First things first, tank inspection. Before you even begin to attach your BCD, you need to make sure your tank is good to go. Look for two key things, the hydrostatic test date and the visual inspection sticker. This is a nitrox tank. I can see visibly that it's labeled nitrox and it has here nitrox use only. And I can also see this is labeled high pressure 100 steel tank. I can see the last service dates. It was done 2023 and we have some in visual inspection on the bottom. Tanks need to be hydrostatic tested every five years and a visual inspection annually. These aren't bureaucratic formalities they're crucial safety checks importantly if you are renting let me share a quick story i was once on a liveaboard in the red sea ready for a week of incredible diving as i was setting up my gear for the first dive i noticed a hydrostatic test date on my tank had expired a month earlier talk about a close call catching that saved me from potentially dangerous situations underwater and a whole lot of hassle with the dive operators. Always check those dates. It could save your dive trip. Once you've confirmed your tank is up to date, it's time to attach the BCD. This is where many divers, even experienced ones, make many mistakes and can lead to discomfort or equipment issues during the dive. Since I'm about to use this one, I'm gonna untape it now. I'm just gonna check. This is a DIN female connector for this, so it's going to be compatible with DIN regulator, which I have. There is no visible damage or rust inside. It looks okay. Position your BCD on the tank with the valve facing towards your head. A common guideline is to align the top of the tank valve with the top of your BCD. This positioning helps your trim and overall comfort underwater, but you might have to play around with it to adjust accordingly to what your trim needs. Now let's talk about those cam bands. They're the straps that secure the BCD to the tank and getting them right is crucial. Then make sure you don't have your hand in the way. That can come down with a lot of force when you're clasping. You want them tight enough that the BCD doesn't move when lifted, but not so tight that you're squeezing the life out of your tank. A good test is to give the tank a shake after securing the BCD. If it's not moving, you're good to go. And here's something that people often forget. Don't put integrated or free weights into your BCD during the assembly process, especially if it's your second dive of the day. These integrated weights can cause the BCD to sit lower and slip when attaching the BCD or even as it's sitting. By now, you should be feeling pretty confident about setting up the foundation of your scuba gear. You know how to inspect your tank position your BCD correctly and secure it properly. This stable and secure base is essential for your comfort and safety underwater. Now that we've laid the foundation with our tank and BCD, let's move on to your lifeline underwater, the regulator. This crucial piece of equipment delivers the air you need to breathe, so getting it set up correctly is absolutely essential. Let's start with an often overlooked but critical component, the tank valve O-ring. This small rubber ring plays a huge role in preventing air leaks. Always give it a visual inspection before attaching your regulator. Look for any signs of wear, cracks, or debris. If it looks damaged or old, replace it immediately. Don't forget that it was a faulty o-ring that caused my incident I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And no one is to blame other than myself for not inspecting this before the dive. Lesson learned and I hope this story sticks with you so you can avoid it. One important thing with regulators is that there are two types of ways that they screw into your tank. And depending on where you are in the world, there are, some are more normal to expect. There's the yoke, which is mostly used in North America, and DIN, which is mostly used everywhere else. And I highly recommend sticking with DIN because it can be adapted to be working with yoke and of course DIN by nature. This is a DIN regulator. It's a male and it's going to screw into 
the female part of the tank. Another pro tip here is to ensure you check the aero 2 level of the air inside the gauge before using it. Many divers die from breathing in bad air mixture in the tank, so taking the time to have zero trust policy with that air in the tank is a good idea. Check the air to ensure it matches your expectations for the dive. This is required for nitrox, but in general, it's a great idea to do with all tanks. Now let's attach the first stage to the tank valve. This is where your high pressure air gets reduced to more manageable pressure. Position the first stage so that the hoses that connect to your second stages will be directed on the right side of your body. This is ensures proper airflow and keeps everything streamlined. And here's a key point. Don't over tighten the connection. You want to secure but not crank down with all your strength. As one of my instructors used to say, you don't want to screw it super tight, but finger tight. A good way to check this is to see if there is some movement when you rotate it. Of course, this is a high pressure tank, so it's going to take a lot of turns to get it on there. And I'm not going to over tighten it. You usually just want to take a little bit of resistance and it's good to go. If you do over tighten it, it will be very difficult to remove after the dive. So tighten it with very low resistance and it's good to go. The O-ring will work its magic to seal the pressure. Next up is connecting the low pressure inflator hose to your BCD. This hose allows you to add air to your BCD for buoyancy control. Slide the quick disconnect fitting onto the BCD's inflator mechanism and secure it with the rubber straps that should be located on the shoulder strap. You should hear a satisfying click when it's properly attached. Give it a gentle tug to ensure it's secure. Now let's talk about the hose arrangement for streamlined diving. Proper positioning of your octopus, the backup regulator, and submersible pressure gauge, or the SPG, is crucial for easy access and viewing. Your SPG and your inflator hose is on the left side. I also have a dry suit hose and those are all going to go on the left and your regulators are going to go on the right side. I can attach my inflator hose. I'm going to take this. Usually there's some places to run it through. I'm going to take this here just to secure it. You want your inflator hose to be managed well and this is going to now go inside of this rubber hose. The reason being is you want this to be able to raise up. And so I'm not going to put this into here. I'm going to keep it on top so that there is a lot of free play there. But I am going to put this onto the lower connection. You see my inflator hose is a little bit long, but that's okay. You can still make it work. I'm going to put it in here. I have to make it a little tight and you see how it connects there. And I give it a small tug and it's good to go. For your octopus, you have a few options. You can secure it in a dedicated pocket on your BCD, clip it to a shoulder strap, or the most safe area is to actually wear it like a necklace. The key is to keep it easily accessible in case you have an emergency. Nothing is more accessible than around your neck. This could be a life saving if you're in an emergency and cannot find your main regulator. I heard recently a story about a very experienced diver that was really well prepared chatting with other divers that were learning from him and while they're walking into the lake he tripped and fell down a big big edge he didn't have all of his gear fully prepared he was just kind of enjoying himself and no one was expecting the clip to be there he was struggling struggling to find his regulator and he couldn't find it anywhere and unfortunately that person did drown i heard about this story recently and it really reinsures this safety mechanism of just making sure you have that regulator attached on your neck. In an emergency like this, it is so much easier to just grab something on your neck. And moving forward, your SPG, which shows you how much air you have left, should be attached to the left side of your BCD. This keeps it readily visible and allows you to have quick checks throughout your dive. Clip this thing with a bolt snap or run it through your BCD so it's not loose and easy to smash with a tank, especially when it's being put onto a boat. 
Remember, monitoring your air supply is a critical skill for safe diving. My main regulator, I'm going to also attach to a D-ring so I can secure that and make it a little safer. And you notice too that I keep my regulator in a nice packed little circle here until I'm ready to use it. Now that we've got our regulator set up, it's time for the moment of truth. Pressurizing the system and checking for leaks. This is a crucial step for ensuring a safe and stress-free dive. First, a quick word of caution that could save you from a nasty surprise. When you're about to open the tank valve, always make sure your SBG is pointing away from your face in case the glass shatters. Trust me, you don't want those glass shards flying anywhere near your face. Hands is up, pressure is good. Now I can check the SBG. It looks like it's a full tank and I can turn that thing all the way on. As you're opening the valve, do it slowly. Listen carefully for hissing sounds. They're telltale signs of a leak. If you hear something, stop and investigate before proceeding. It's much better to catch a problem now than when you are 60 feet underwater. Now let's talk about opening the tank valve. You might have heard the age old device about turning a quarter back after opening. Well, I'm here to tell you that's outdated information. Modern regulators are designed to handle full pressure, so go ahead and open the tank valve all the way. This ensures a steady, reliable air supply throughout your dive. One thing to note, you don't want to over time the valve. Don't crank it or you will have a really hard time at the end of the dive. When I turn it on, I'm not gonna over time it. I'm gonna take it to the very end and just leave it there. That's all, just make sure it's all the way on. I'm not over torquing it. As soon as I have resistance, I leave it there, done. Once the valve is fully open, it's time for a thorough leak check. Run your hand along all the connections, feeling for any air escape. Pay special attention to the first stage the low pressure inflator hose and where the SBG attaches. Remember, a small leak can quickly become a big problem underwater. If you have a chance to submerge your connections fully, it'll be very apparent if there's a leak by performing uh, what you call a bubble check. Let me share a personal experience that highlights just how important this step is. I was diving the Great Barrier Reef, all set in for an incredible day of exploring. As I was doing my final checks, I noticed a slight hiss coming from my first stage. I chose to ignore it, unfortunately, and as it turns out, it was a fairly steady leak that had my group's dive time because I was running out of air so quickly. Don't let that happen to you. While you're checking for leaks, keep an eye on your SBG. If the needle is dropping, even though you're not breathing from the regulator, that's a clear sign of a leak somewhere in the system. Don't ignore it. Find the source and address it before you get in the water. A bubble test may help find that leak much faster than just listening for the hiss. It's worth noting that not all leaks are obvious. Trust your instincts. If something doesn't seem right, it probably isn't. It's always better to double check than risk your safety underwater. Remember, a proper leak check isn't just about ticking a box on your pre-dive checklist. It's about ensuring your own safety and peace of mind. When you know your gear is functioning perfectly, you can focus on enjoying the incredible underwater world around you rather than worrying about equipment issues. Now that we've pressurized our system and checked for leaks, it's time for the final checks that'll ensure you're breathing easy underwater. These last steps are crucial for a stress-free dive. First up, we need to test the BCD inflation and deflation. This isn't just a formality, it's essential for proper buoyancy control underwater. Start by pressing the inflate button to fill your BCD. You should hear air flowing in smoothly. The inflator hose. Looks good. Once it's full, listen for the overpressure relief valve releasing excess air. This tells your BCD can hold air without leaks. Next, test the deflation. Press the deflate button and make sure the air quickly releases and completely. Also looks good. But it's important to note that in case you have a complete BCD failure, you should always be able to surface with your own lungs. Now let's move on to testing your regulators. This step is all about ensuring your lifeline underwater 
is functioning perfectly. Start with your primary regulator. Take three or four deep breaths from it. Pay attention to how it feels. The air should flow easily and smoothly without any resistance or unusual sounds. If you are hearing anything whistling or feel stuttering in the airflow, that's a red flag. Don't forget to test your backup or secondary regulator too. It's easy to overlook since we don't use it often, but in an emergency, you'll be glad you checked it. Take a few breaths from it just like you did in the primary. The airflow should feel the same. While you're breathing from your regulators, keep an eye on your SPG. The needle shouldn't drop significantly during these few breaths. If it does, it could indicate a leak somewhere in the system or someone else accidentally turned off your tank. Now here's something many divers overlook, the oral inflation of your BCD. Below into your oral inflation hole, this serves two purposes. First, it checks that the oral inflation mechanism is working correctly. Second, it's a backup way to inflate your BCD if your inflation hose fails. It's worth mentioning that bacteria can grow inside your BCD, so don't breathe in from the oral inflator hose. I'm going to start assembling the rest of my gear. I have my compass. One thing to note about compass is make sure this is facing you. My dive computer. I usually like to put on my wrist stuff first and my mask. Now would be a good time to defog it. I've already defogged this one, so it's good to go. One important thing is people will think it's a emergency. If you wear your goggles in front, put your goggles behind until you're ready to dive like this. DSMB. Always carry a DSMB. I put it in my dry suit pocket, but you can easily assemble it and put it in the exterior of your rig as well. I'm going to connect my dry suit hose. One important thing is you can take it underneath this strap like so. When you put your arm through, it's always going to be on top. And then it connects my dry suit hose. Looks good. Get your left arm in first, especially your inflator. You don't want to mess with that, so get it through first. All right, I'm ready for diving. Once you've done all these checks yourself, it's time for a buddy check. This isn't just a formality, it's a crucial safety step that can catch anything you might have missed. Can't stress enough how important this is. During your buddy check, verify each other's setup. Trying to get in a routine and work a system for doing buddy checks is a great idea. Starting from the top down is one I favor. Check that all the hoses are connected properly. BCDs can inflate and deflate, and both primary and secondary regulators are working. Don't rush this process. It's your last line of defense against equipment issues underwater. I have my fins and I have my full attire. This is when I would do a buddy check. So someone would check my gear just in case I forgot something. It's easy to forget something. You saw all the steps and you checked them the same way you did yourself. And this is just extra insurance that you did everything right. Let's go diving. All right, let's recap the key points of our gear assembly journey. We've covered tank inspection, BCD attachment, regular setup, and leak checking. Remember, each step builds on the last, creating a solid foundation for a safe dive. Now it's time to put all these skills into practice on your next dive. Proper gear setup isn't just about safety, it's about enhancing your entire underwater experience. When you're confident in your equipment, you can focus on the wonders around you, not worrying about your gear. In this video, we tried to go through the ins and outs of assembling your gear, but there are still a lot of puzzle pieces missing with scuba diving that we have not fully explored with the primary pieces of gear you will need as a diver. Check it out here and catch you on the next one.